Let's go to the United States of America, where Fernando Adi, a very good striker, is standing by to talk to us. He plays for the Portland Timbers, and guess what? He gets sweeter now. He's the club's all-time goal scorer. Let's go. To, let's go to Portland. Uh, good evening, Fernando. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good evening. How are you? Oh, we're super. Over here. I'm sure you're doing fine, too. Yeah, we're doing very well. Fantastic. Um, Adi, I, I watched highlights of that game in Philadelphia. Um, in the 88th 88, 88 minute, you stepped up to play, uh, to take a penalty kick, and you scored to become Portland Timbers' all-time goal scorer. Were you under any form of pressure when you were stepping up to that kick? Um, I mean, it's not, it wasn't a big start to come to the game. I helped the team in every game. Uh, the guys were pretty excited before the start of the game. They wanted me to um, to break the record, and uh, that's just what happened. So uh, the entire team was excited. Uh, I was excited knowing that the record has been there for a very long time. Uh, it was a pretty uh, intense game for me, knowing that uh, I need just to go to break a massive record that's been there for about 35 years. So it was a big uh, pleasure for me, you know, to represent the club for a few years and uh, play this game and be able to to score those number of goals uh, to have the record now is just a, a massive uh, accomplishment for me and uh, the entire team. Mm. 46th goal for uh, for your club. Uh, uh, the legendary status for you at Portland team, uh, does does that mean you're not leaving that place? <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you can you can never say what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, this uh, soccer and uh, a lot of things can happen. But um, you know, this uh, this is kind of a situation where you get in, and as a player, you just want to stay put and uh, try to take on the record and try to be in a in a position where you can say, okay, um, I don't want someone to catch up to the record I'm creating. But um, you never know. This is soccer, and uh, things can change uh, pretty quick. But um, for now, I'm really excited to be here, and um, I'm enjoying every bit of it. I never know. Maybe uh, the, the summer already. We might just be seeing Adi in, in England. It's all good. Let's talk about the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Uh, you were invited for the AFCON qualifiers. Uh, unfortunately, Nigeria didn't qualify uh, that time around. Um, do you still follow the team? Uh, definitely, pretty much. I, I know a lot about the Super Eagles. You know, um, it was a pretty impressive uh, decision for the uh, for the uh, coaches and everyone to, to get me into the team and I was excited to be there. Uh, I was really excited to come and uh, of course uh, train with the guys uh, in as much as I didn't get an opportunity to dress or play the game. Uh, it was a big experience for me. I follow the team a lot. Um, I watched their last uh, friendly game in England and you know um, of course uh, Spike was a dream for every, every player from Nigeria to be able to represent the nation. And that dream of still playing for the Super Eagles, how much of it is still alive? Um, pretty much, pretty much. Um, I'm still uh, looking forward to it. I'm still very excited to represent the country. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the time I'll be called in. And uh, if I'm called in uh, tomorrow, I'm, I'll be very excited to come and represent my country. Mm, fantastic. So tell me, this phase that the Super Eagles are going through at the moment, a new coach uh, trying to you know, bring some young players into the mix, uh, AFCON qualifiers, 2018 World Cup qualifiers, with what you've seen of the Super Eagles, are you super confident that they can uh, make it to this tournament? Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, if we keep playing well, you know, we'll have a crop of young players, we've got some experienced older players in the team. So, um, you know, the coach just needs to be allowed to do uh, what he has to do to, to win. And, uh, you know, the team have been winning. So uh, it's just uh, to let the coach do his thing. But, you know, uh, we can't just integrate uh, young players into the team uh, every match, try to introduce uh, new players. But um, I think if we keep a couple of players together for, uh, for a period of time, you know, uh, they understand it's going to be there. And, uh, you know, players will be playing with a lot of instinct uh, because they understand each player, the next guy next to them. So... Uh, we just need to keep playing together, you know, um, whoever comes in the team just uh, have to put the team uh, first uh, before individual performance. And I think if we keep doing the same uh, what we do, we've been doing uh, for the past few games, uh, I think, uh, yeah, we'll be in all those competition we want to be. Before I let you go, uh, Fernando, tell me, um, that goal that made it for the six and smashed the record, who did you dedicate it to? <laughs> uh, I think that will go to my... Uh, to my wife, you know, um, she's pregnant, so um, that was a goal to celebrate uh, that period of, uh, of the time. And uh, we're all excited because we've been waiting for the, this, and uh, now she's pregnant, so uh, I did get a goal to her and to our baby's car. 
I must say thank you so much, Fernando Adi, for making our time to talk to us. Goal scoring machine for Portland Timbers. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah.